Hey, good weekend to you. Welcome to Leading Edge. I'm Jerry Anderson. Good to have you along. She is a state senator, Teresa Gavarone, Republican, Bowling Green, 2nd District. Today, we're going to get into, can you really legislate responsible behavior? Is it protecting elections or making it tougher for some people to participate? Have we finally fixed Ohio's messed up school funding crisis? Teresa Gavron, if you're ready, we got a lot to get to. And that just scratched the surface right there. So let's get going. Her second district, by the way, uh, Wood County, where she lives and I live, but also Erie and Ottawa. And then even, I think, parts of Fulton and Lucas are in there as well. Um, great to see you. Uh, I have to start. This, this one's tough. It's our hometown university, BGSU, suffering a tragic blow. Been in the news. You folks all know this. Uh, with the death of his student during what appears to have been an alcohol-soaked fraternity hazing incident. Now, it is stupid. It is dangerous. It is, as we've now learned, deadly, uh, this whole thing called hazing. But it's been around forever. And, and I'm just wondering why it has taken Stone Foltz's tragic death for the legislature to take up Collins Law, actually named after Colin Wyant, an OU student. Yeah. And that's correct. Uh, Collins Law actually came up in legislation last General Assembly okay. um, in, in House Bill 310, which also included an anti-bullying um, K through 12 component as well. And when it came over to the Senate after passing the House, it was maybe mid-November. And I remember listening to that testimony and hearing the story of Colin Wyant and how devastating that was. But the General Assembly ended shortly after in December, and it didn't get have time to get across the finish line. So earlier this year, I hear that story about Stone Foltz here in Bowling Green, mm -hmm. and it, it really shook me to the core. I, my son's a student at Bowling Green. I know that, yeah. And, and you know, I, my alma mater, and to hear that something like this happened um, again in our community. Uh, I, I, I want to do something. I'm going to do something about this. And I, I thought, who would I want to work with on this legislation? I called my good friend, Stephanie Kunze, a senator um, down in the Columbus area. And when I gave her a call, found out that she had continued working on House Bill 310, um, mm -hmm. taking that. But, but what our bill does is it laser focuses only on the hazing portion of that bill. Are you going and, to get it? Are you going to get it passed in, in Stephanie being down in Columbus? I mean, Stone is from Delaware, just north of Columbus. Um, uh, Colin was over there in Dublin, another Columbus suburb. And yeah. you talk about being up here in Beach. Are you guys going to get this done? I mean, this should have been done yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I can tell you one thing, we're very committed to getting it done. It's in the um, Higher Education and Workforce uh, Development Committee right now, um, which is operating as a, a subcommittee for the finance for the budget. Mm. Um, so there's a lot going on in that committee, but also um, some interested parties had approached the chair um, with some issues. So we're working through those now, but I tell you one thing, I am, uh, I'm gonna continue working really hard to get this and no parent should ever get that knock on the door and no parent should ever get a call that this has happened again. And I I, I wanna make sure that Ohio- Well, I know that this will, will, will strengthen penalties and turn misdemeanors into yeah. felonies. And especially if things like drugs or alcohol are used in, in, as part of a, a, a process in which pressure is placed on a kid to do this. Um, mm -hmm. Big issue, stay on it. You're a key player in Ohio budget talks. I know folks use of budgets are boring, Jerry, but this one we're hearing contains and funds a fix for Ohio's woefully messed up and unconstitutional method of funding schools. What changes does it make? And is this one going to pass? Um, well, the House has uh, uh, been working on the what's called the fair school funding model mm -hmm. formula, which uh, was also called the Cut Patterson Cut Patterson, formula, yep. which you, you may have heard of. So uh, that's come over in the budget. And you know, it was important to talk about this in, in the budget context because it adds an additional $2 billion in, uh, in spending towards education and where's that coming from? So that's why um, it, it's gone into the budget right now. And the Senate is working through that. There, there are other proposals as well being discussed. So it's a, a work in progress, but school funding needs to be fixed. 
It's something uh, that we know a budget will pass by law. They have to, folks. It's a biennial budget in our in our fiscal year starts July one, goes through June thirtieth. So they they're, they're on a clock. And some people, like State Representative Lisa Sebecki, Democrat Toledo, on my show a few weeks ago, she didn't say this on the show. I've seen her say it since then. That says no. This school funding fix should be its own standalone bill. Shouldn't it be? I mean, so at least we don't have to do this dance as part of the budget every two years. Well, I think it's important that we do have a new school funding formula. Yeah. Um, the, the reason this went into the budget is because it does add an additional $2 billion uh, on top of what's currently being spent towards school funding. There's a phase in, but that's a lot of money. And we need to look at the budget as a whole to see where that's coming from. So that uh, was one of the reasons it became part of the budget conversation. And certainly, um, it is something that needs to be done. We need to be working on a school funding fix and, and long-term solutions so where schools have predictability. So we know um, what what that formula is and that it's it's fair throughout. Yeah, she's Teresa Gavron, a Republican, second Senate district. Uh, Teresa, if Ohio follows the lead of other Republican-led states, we're gonna see a push, maybe you tell me if you're already seeing it down there, to make voting tougher here in the Buckeye State. Is this just a partisan reaction to Donald Trump losing? Is this a solution in search of a problem since really nobody is alleging voter fraud in Ohio? Um, well, I, I tell you one thing. Um, oh. Ohio has one of the most expansive early voting opportunities um, in any state. You can vote 28 days before the election. And we have in-person absentee voting. We've got... Um, uh, we, we've got many opportunities. You can vote um, in person on weekends, which yeah. a lot of states, that's not even an opportunity. So um, we do have a lot of opportunities, but in Ohio, it's important that um, voters have confidence that their vote is being counted and counted correctly. If you remember, I had legislation last General Assembly that got signed into law that requires audits done. Um, every election to make sure we're doing things right. There was a lot of question. There were a lot of questions that came up after the last election. Um, people questioning the integrity of our elections, and we want to make sure that people have that confidence. We want to make sure that uh, that people have confidence in the in the process as well. Uh, and no, that, I, I think I mean question the confidence in the process is absolutely. But just so I'm clear here, I mean, if there were questions raised. Believe me, they sent the entire Justice Department out looking for problems. I mean, did Donald Trump win or lose that election? Um, well, I know we, Joe Biden is our, our current president right now. <laughs> because he um, won the election. And, and, and we are really wanna make sure that when you vote in Ohio, that you know your vote is counted nope. and is counted correctly. So we wanna make sure that we're looking at things that uh, make it I, I want to make sure everyone who wants to vote has access to the ballot. Good. And I also want to make sure that everyone who votes has confidence that it's counted correctly. And, and that's what is so important. We want yes. to make sure that people, everyone can vote. All right, I got to get to a break here. And there's more to talk about. She's Teresa Gavron, State Senator, 2nd District. This is Leading Edge. We're back after this.